Yes, we're gonna address the hair. If you guys didn't see my weekend vlog, which I will link right up here for you, I decided to have some fun with my grays and after buying that wig, which was also featured already on this channel, I think, I was like, you know what? Why don't I just go for it and dye my hair a fun color? And my grays really took to this like beautiful gr like green color. I'm just having a little bit of fun with my hair. You're gonna see a lot of changes happening with it because I just, I feel like it. But let me tell you something. <laughs> I've never felt more space, see, in my life. Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today, I have a video that I actually wasn't planning on filming until I went book shopping or book perusing. And this is Book Chats. Book Chats is basically a place where I come to tell you about things regarding books that have been gnawing at my noggin. These are not like, um, I'm sorry, my, my shirt was like put in the wash and now it's got these things so I keep looking at them. But um, these are not truths or things that I think are the 100% correct thing that people should do with their books or anything like that. These are just things that I think about and that maybe you can think about now too. But anyway, I love reading non-fiction books. I especially love reading nature-themed non-fiction books. And I have found recently that finding non-fiction natural writing from BIPOC authors, in case you don't know, BIPOC is black, indigenous, people of color authors, is really difficult. Really difficult. And specifically, books that are not about the United States of America. And I went to the bookstore hoping that I would find at least some Latin American writers writing about the fauna of, natu of natural of Latin America, maybe some Asian writers, some African writers writing about their experiences living in Africa, the, like what they're doing to preserve their fauna and flora and everything. And what I found is First of all, there is no way of knowing whether an author is BIPOC. I, I, I'm gonna keep saying BIPOC, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if it's BIPOC or BIPOC, I don't know. I, I'm gonna say BIPOC. You are free to, co to comment in the comment section and tell me how to pronounce it, but that's how I'm gonna pronounce it. But anyway, um, unless you had your phone with you and searched every single author and every single book, or unless you came with a book in mind, which I didn't because I'm kind of new to the, gen to the genre and I wanted something new and exciting, um, finding these books is a nearly impossible task. The same thing happens with any genre really unless you know that the author is BIPOC you have to do a re lot of research because like before we had author uh, or at least you know it'd be a well-known author you know like you know NK or, or maybe you don't know but NK Jemison is a very famous author a black author and stuff like that but a lot of the times people don't know and that got me thinking just like in that one video I said that one of the best ways to like diversify your reading is to have a shelf dedicated to BIPOC authors so that you can visually see where they are and you can pick them out without having to like peruse or remember, oh yeah, this is a BIPOC author. I wonder if it would be a good idea for bookstores to have dedicated spaces within their like genre, like, genre, like uh, YA, but instead of just it being YA and then just having a bunch of authors all over the place, have a specific shelf for BIPOC, BIPOC authors in YA. And then you have nature writing and then have a dedicated space to these authors. Now there's two sides to this, which my husband and I were discussing. Number one is that you are alienating kind of 
or not alienating, but you're like separating these authors from other authors. And whether that's a good idea or if that's more segregation. But here's my thought, because I think it would be a good idea. I actually believe that it would be a great idea. The first thing that comes to mind is, I think we visually need a reminder just how shitty publishing is when it comes to BIPOC authors, because I'm, I'm going to assure you the shelves are going to be full of white people's books and then we're going to have smaller shelves of BIPOC authors, especially in genres like sci-fi, which is my favorite genre. And I think that's going to make us wonder and force ourselves to really look at the publishing industry and it's going to force the publishing industry to look at itself and see that they are not doing a very good job of publishing different kinds of authors. The other thing that I feel um, is important, my husband says, well, yeah, but it'll be easier for racists to avoid those books. I mean, honestly, I don't cater to racists, so <laughs> I don't care what's easier for them or not. But it also just helps you realize that maybe you have a stack of books this big and then you have been ignoring this whole section of books. And I think it will spark like this desire to know more about these authors and about their stories. That's my personal belief. And it's it be so to me in my utopic little bookstore where we have just like stand like bookshelves of, of BIPOC, I'm sorry, I, I'm really bad at just saying that all together, authors, and like being able to just pick them out and, and seeing them and seeing how many books there are because I really want to read more from black authors, indigenous authors, people of color, Latinx author, authors, Asian authors, all of this. And I want to read their stories, especially in the non-fiction category, talking about, I am so like surprised how many books about Africa and living in Africa. I'm, I'm using the term Africa like generalized. I know Africa has many different countries, but generalized African life written by white people about their experiences in Africa. And it's like, what about the people that actually live there and come from there and have to experience what it's like being from there? What about people studying animals in Africa that are not white? <laughs> Can you imagine that? And then I got so pissed off because I went to like the nature section or the travel section and then I found so many books by Spanish conquistadors talking about Latin America. Ah, <laughs> uh, that was so heart-wrenching because it's like, who are you? Who are you to be speaking about these people? Like why, why don't I have more indigenous people talking about their culture, their food, everything? And also not everything has to be based in the United States. I know there's a, there's a great, by the way, a great resource that I will leave down below that, um, I'm sorry, uh, um, I forget your name, but it's from a cup of books. I'll link her channel up above because I was looking for more BIPOC authors doing nature writing and there are great, there, there's a great article on it. It, it like has a lot of um, black authors, but they're all talking about the North American experience. And I don't live in North America and I want more from the rest of the world. So, I think personally that it would be wonderful if bookstores started having shelves just dedicated to BIPOC authors. So a sci-fi shelf only with BIPOC authors, a um, non-fiction, fantasy, YA, all of it, so that we don't have to like constantly be doing all of the research, which I mean, it's, it's good to do research and you should be doing research, but I think that this also will take away the whole 
excuse of, oh, I just pick up a book and I don't even notice the author. I just pick up what I want. Well, honey, baby, boo-boo, child, maybe you should be paying attention to the author. And maybe if it's right there for you, you no longer have an excuse to ignore it. But as always, I leave the question open to you. Do you think this is a good idea or do you actually think that this would be more hurtful for the BIPOC author community? I don't know. What do you think? Please let me know down below. And, and along with that, um, I, I keep saying BIPOC, but also, you know, queer shelves. I mean, I think we need to start to realize that just having a sci-fi shelf, a YA shelf, a romance shelf, a nature shelf, it's just not enough anymore. It's, we live in a world that is way more complicated than that. And that's good. It's good that we are complicating things because right now they're a little bit too easy for people that are full of excuses. So yeah, without any further ado, I bid you adieu. Please let me know what you think down below and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Hopefully full of shelves of colorful authors. <laughs> Bye guys.